The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Baltimore Ravens wow. in a classic AFC North rivalry game that showcased two defenses doing yep. their thing. An inept offense coming up with a massive play, shout out to the quarterback, mm -hmm. and then an offensive coordinator not being thrilled <laughs> at all. Let's just go through the series that won the game for the Pittsburgh Steelers, then we'll dive into Tone Diggs' thoughts. Here's Kenny Pickett on a second and nine, right near field goal range, down to minute 33 left in the game. Listen to what Kenny Pickett's doing here as a professional quarterback in his second year starting for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Long enough, he knows how to play the angles in the wind you would expect. And right now, Jalen Warren. Randy, 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 check. Randy, Randy. I believe that's Randy Moss. And the Randy Moss check is George Pickens got one-on-one -on -one at the bottom. And Kenny Pickett says, give me that. And Pickens and Pickett, who had the number one QBR together in the entire NFL last year, Put a touchdown on the board, the only one, with 117 yeah. left in the game to take the lead over the Baltimore Ravens. And obviously, T.J. Watt would go Wide. on to take over. But when that touchdown happens, they actually have a shot in the offensive coach's uh, suite, pretty much. Matt Canada, the near one here. Touchdown happens. Look at the boys. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Woo! Look at Matt Canada. Something know. good just happened on his offense. He has no idea. <laughs> and I don't know if he's upset because the Randy check came and that wasn't the play that he called. Oh, and he maybe, oh, we left too much time on the clock. But nonetheless, the fans in the stands didn't even get a chance to see that Matt Canada had no reaction when the biggest play of the day happened to potentially win the game with an offense that he's calling, that the quarterback made a check. Here's another beautiful chant from the people in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're not talking about the country. <laughs> no. No, they're no, talking no. about that Matt Cannon guy. Tone, you guys get a big time win. Yep. And here's a fun stat here from Hembo. Sounds like it's going to be fun. Uh, uh, hold on, hold <laughs> on. Are. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. It's something about like the Pittsburgh Steelers only have been outscored by 31 points, outgained by like 300 and some yards, and some other stat, sure. and they're still three and two somehow. <laughs> yeah. Like this is what the Pittsburgh Steelers do. But what did you see yesterday that makes you believe that this Steelers could potentially win? Or what did you see yesterday that makes you believe that this Pittsburgh Steelers is the same Pittsburgh Steelers that are just going to be ah and be able to steal games? At yeah. The so end? them going on the road last week and getting blown out as road favorites against the Texans, then coming back and winning as dogs against the Ravens at home in Akersher is one of the most predictable things of all time with this team because that's how it's been the last few years. Um, to be honest, Pat, nothing that I saw yesterday made me believe that anything is going to change for the rest of the season oh, okay, or okay. be any good okay. until, Ooh, okay. until the Randy Randy call okay, happened. And then if we're going to do in the fourth quarter where Ben – Ben did it where his he uh, couldn't, can't. Can't, couldn't hear anymore. And if we're gonna do, and the thing is, the last last season when they went six and two or whatever it was down the stretch, Kenny was always really really good in the fourth quarter. So like as a coaching staff, as a team, maybe figure out what they do so well in the fourth quarter to come back and win games. That for the first three quarters when they are abysmal, is different because oh, like another game under three hundred yards. Well, let's not I mean don't even that four hundred yard stat. That's not a real thing. That's <laughs> not never, possible. Yeah. That's uh -huh. never going to happen ever again. Let's just try to get 300 potentially, potentially but yes, Highsmith had 11 pressures, which I believe is the most insane by a single player uh, in a game this season. Uh, TJ had a, a, a sack. He had a huge punch to the face of, of Zay, Zay Flowers. Flowers. That was yeah, cool. Good tackle. Jo Joey Porter Jr. gets on the field. Oh, he has an interception that basically is the turning point in the game because they score there. That's game over. Um, yeah, I mean there was a lot of there was a lot of good, but there was also a lot of the same same bad yesterday. Here's the stat that Hembo gave me before we pivot to some breaking news from Adam Schefter. Pittsburgh had been outscored by 31 points this year, outgained by 606 yards, Damn. and they're still three and two. Hell That's yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers football. That's, That's Pittsburgh Steelers football. Yeah, Randy, Randy though, great text to check. All out pressure, slide it to the right. Pick it up, and that defense, you got us in pressure there because you're right on that fringe field goal area, so you got us in pressure. Marlon Humphrey, you got to know that fade ball is coming. Uh, this is from Connor Speed, at Connor Speed 6. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but the AFC North is dead. Whoa. When the Pittsburgh Steelers are in first place with Matt Cannon at the helm of the worst offense in NFL history, you can go ahead and just bury the entire division. We all fucking stink. I love that. Jeez. I love that. I don't necessarily disagree. Whoa.
Well, Bengals are finally back. No, yeah, Joey B and Bengals. Jamar Chase Bengals found got it. it. Oh, you, congrats. You did it against every, what everyone said would be the worst team in the NFL. Whoa. What everyone said is not the outcome of what it actually is. Well, their is. defense still stinks. The cards have put it on a lot of people mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. And the Bengals were able to show up and show out. Jamar Chase all the way back, AJ. I assume him saying, I'm always fucking open, was a nice reminder to Zach Taylor. Oh, we should draw plays for this guy. And then Joey B is able to find him miraculously more often than he has all season. I love what these guys did yesterday. I'm thankful that they're back in the world of sport being great again. And the, car, uh, the Bengals, who have started slow every single year, have done it again. And now we're at the point where we just get to enjoy them. I think the Bengals are all the way back. And we are all going to be better off because of it, AJ. Mm, right there. Beauty. Oh. Beautiful ball right there. Well, I think going into this game, we were questioning, I, I know Joe said he feels as good this week as he has all year, and I believe him now. After yeah. watching this game, I watched him scramble. He had to run, I don't know, he, he got 10, 15 yards or whatever, but he was moving downfield and didn't look like his calf was an issue at all. So I think we should see more of this from the Bengals. I think so too. Congratulations on the Bengals joining the 2023 NFL season. Oh, yeah. We're all yeah. thankful for it. Joe took some massive shots early. Yes. Big time shots. Yeah. Bounced right back. Put on his free outfit. Went into the press conference. Said Kid Cuddy gave me his shoes. And Trevor mm -hmm. gave me this thing. I went to high school with him. He's this. <laughs> and then Jamar Trace uh, won on the X and said, yeah, I'm 7-Eleven, baby. I'm always open. <laughs> I appreciate this. I love this. And uh, – the NFL is better with this Bengals team doing great things. Yeah. yeah. Did that without T, too. No T. Higgins are still scoring 34 points. That's dangerous. That is dangerous. And the AFC North is a division that does not look dangerous at all. So, although the Bengals started slow, I think everything is very much within their grasp. Tone digs. Yeah, as far as the division is, for sure. But, like, uh, in the grand scheme of things, winning a Super Bowl, that's not a possibility. What? Tony. For the oh, Bengals? Come on, yeah. Tony. Hen Hendrickson had like two and a half sacks this what game, too. I mean, he's still rolling. He Chase just had three tuds. That's like game changer. What do you, what a yeah, game we'll break? We'll you, you don't believe that. You don't yeah, get, I do. What do you believe? No. You believe the AFC North has no title contenders? Yes. Mm. Wow. He's I still believe in the Ravens. Oh, Absolutely. They, they drop. I mean, what, seven drops yesterday? Eight, can't actually. Much, yeah, it can't get much worse. Than Bateman in the end zone, right? Bateman Would have been in touchdown the end zone. for half. Back Zay play. had two, oh, yeah. but one of them, TJ Watt was punching him yeah, in the punch, throat. Punch <laughs> so, how did you see TJ Watt say, this is my new tackling style? I did. Yeah, I thought it was pretty creative. How about him winning the game, taking the helmet off? I don't care if there's a penalty. Let's have a good time. <laughs> yeah. What a win. This is a massive rivalry. Oh. <laughs> this is a oh, massive no. rivalry in the NFL. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I hope we keep it forever. But, like, Pittsburgh, for shoot, hates the Ravens. Yeah. Ravens hate the Steelers. <laughs> T.J. Watt punches guys in the face in the middle of plays. And the Steelers somehow are 3-2 and two in the AFC North. This one, though, Ooh. like, the Steelers-Ravens is a respectful hate. Like, I, I yes. respect the fuck out of the Ravens. Really? The yeah. other two teams in the division, I have no respect oh, for those two teams. Why? Why not? Well, because they've stunk forever, and they have no business being up there.